Hi, hello, this is Charlie Jose and you're watching again another episode of Upstream Charlie. In today's episode, we'll do a like uh, BTC and uh, crypto uh, prediction for 2023, at least the first half of 2023 as far as our crystal ball and the other, other analysts uh, analysts uh, crystal ball can see okay so when you're like uh, doing some uh, more or less uh, prediction or a uh, or an informed uh, analysis in uh, crypto you, you have to uh, take into consideration economics macroeconomics and uh, socioeconomic and political conditions also uh from the outside okay uh because uh when we do analysis it's mostly based on uh, the american economy because what whenever america sneezes we catch cold same thing in the market or in uh you know in in business okay in economics so uh, so far, if you're, uh, you know, if you're in tune with uh, the macroeconomics lately, uh, the U.S. is uh, in a, currently in a technical recession because in uh, Q1, Q2 of 2022 this year, uh, there's uh, two, two, two quarters of negative uh, GDP growth. So that that actually entails as per u.s definition of a technical recession so they are currently running in a technical recession but uh, the u.s is not uh, admi admitting admitting it because uh, who would like to admit that they are in a recession so with regards to recession uh, next year uh, starting january up to like june of 2023 uh, people are expecting uh, uh, well, investment firms, analysts, etc., uh, stock stock market analysts, you know, they're expecting, and even banks and investment banks, they're expecting that uh, uh, the U.S. Fed Federal Reserve is uh, adamant in uh, pushing down the economy, meaning they're going to induce recession of some sort okay uh, right now they're having a hard time because america has lots of job openings and and there's not enough uh not enough workers to fill in the job so they want to have the jobs market uh you know there will be unemployment in other words but how can you do that when when uh, companies are currently needing workers right so so they're also uh, tapering down the interest rate because last time last time they were doing like 75 basis points and then just recently they uh, lowered it down but they're still increasing uh, interest rate to uh, 50 basis points and maybe on January they'll do a 25 or 50 again uh, but the, the question is will they do it do do another do another uh, uh interest rate on february and in march and if they do that will they attain the so-called u.s recession and the down market and you know, the labor market goes down because the objective of the fed is they they want to try they want to try to uh to, to have an inflation rate of 2%, okay? And uh, another one that's affecting the whole market and, uh, and the bond market is, is that, that the, 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 the decade of uh, free money is technically over at this point. When they say free money, not only in the US, but, but also in uh, the EU, because in the EU they have like zero interest rates, and in the US they like uh, uh, it's either they had zero interest rates 
to like very minimum minimal uh, interest rates okay to to the point that's easy to for corporations for companies and individuals to borrow money and uh, spend of course where else that's, so that's why later uh, i'll explain to you in the graph form after we played the the summary of uh you know of uh, so of uh, Garrett Soloway's interview at uh, the tech path of uh, Paul Barron network okay so this show uh, we'll uh, start off with uh, what's what's going to be with BTC as per Gareth Mr Garrett's uh, Soloway and uh, what's going to how is it going to affect the the market in general as well and especially the altcoins and uh, then after that i'll do an explanation in graphic form uh, uh, so that you could have like a visual uh, understanding if you're like a visual person like me you know to translate that uh, verbal communication that analysis by uh, garrett soloway okay so without further ado these are the clips that i took from uh, Paul Barron Network. We have different strategies, but the big outlook is the one that we'll start to see as Q4 earnings start to run in uh, in January, along with the potentials around what the Fed might do in February. And if you look at you know some of the things here was Yahoo Finance. You know, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, there's a you know the complete story. This is kind of the Fed's the Fed's historic shift in 2022, which has been this fastest rising rate scenario that we've dealt with. There was another tweet here that I thought was interesting over from uh, GR, uh, GR Dector. Um, and you can kind of see it right there. Highest, ever. look at that vertical. That's so crazy how fast the Fed rate has been changing. When we look at that and you compare to the pressures that we're gonna see in macro, 2023, love to get your vision on how you think the Fed uh, situation may resolve in 2023. Yeah, so I mean, for the most part, I'm still taking the under, meaning that at some point, we're going to see a crack in this economy that's going to be bigger than just the housing markets collapsing. And I'm being kind of, you know, comical in that we're seeing cracks out there. You're seeing almost every yeah. major off workers on the last company market, the ripple effect there. You look at the stock market where it is, crypto where it is. And the consumer, the consumer is holding on, in my opinion, through Christmas. They want to spend. It's been COVID lockdown. They want to have a great Christmas holiday season. But my guess is early in 2023, you start to see that cracks, the cracks emerge. And I think the Fed's going to have to put the, you know, hold back. I think maybe one more rate hike in early 2023. And then they're going to have to go to this more of a pause and wait and see attitude. Yeah, I was looking at this, uh, the job shock concept here that is been, and this is one that we've talked about for quite some time, but you can kind of see the potential here of where the break starts to occur. And this is going to be the big differential that, you know, Zero Hedge was reporting on this, thinking about a $1.5 million job differential. This is something you and I have talked about at, at length over the past few months is that the job correction that we will see just because of the pent up demand in the marketplace, that's going to play out. We will see consumer credit also be part of this, which we already know is now over a trillion dollars in consumer credit. With all of those factors playing into this, now you're in the Fed's uh, you know situation here. Jerome Powell is going to start to see some of this maybe indicating as early as uh, February. How do you think he's going to play the Fed hikes that he is already kind of predestined for 2023? You think we'll get them up front and then it'll level off and just stay high for the year? Or what's your What's your anticipation? Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm leaning. I think you get one more rate hike in early 2023, and then the Fed goes to the sidelines. I don't think they cut rates, and I think they're going to be very, very cautious on cutting rates, um, just like I think they overloaded the hikes too much here to kind of overcompensate for saying it was transitory. Oh, we're not going to have lasting inflation. They were proven wrong. They kind of had this emotional response of, oh, my goodness, we have to play catch up now. I think on the other side, you have from the 70s and 80s where inflation, you know, you saw inflation and then you saw kind of rates come to a pause or even start to be lowered. And then inflation came roaring back. 
And so I think the Fed has said that and Jerome Powell has talked about that and how he doesn't want to repeat those issues. So I think that the Fed is going to stick with the current rate for quite a while until yeah. absolutely the economy breaks and then they will react and probably be behind the curve once again. Yeah, I think that's going to happen with the influx of job loss, uh, the the isolation of the real estate market. So I think I think in Q1, Q2, we'll start to really see the the elements uh, run off the wheels. And then lastly, will be the last ditch effort of trying to correct the consumer credit market, which will be in in essence by then too late, you know, because it's yep. already done the damage. Which a lot of people have talked about this in the used car market and just what the dealers are saying about the repos that they're expecting in, in Q1 and 2, which could really change things out. You look at the other thing I wanted to kind of compare. This is miners' revenue. Uh, you can kind of see the numbers, obviously, uh, dramatically, and this being Bitcoin miners' uh, revenue. And then if you look at the overall uh, mining daily hash, also uh, diving down as we continue to see this play into uh, a situation that leads into the next layer of potential upside for Bitcoin being the halvening. With that playing out, let's go to your Bitcoin chart. I want to look at how you think this plays out for 2023 with all of these, you know, macro pressures, the deal with, you know, with what's happening in the mining sector, the whole thing. Where do you see it? Yeah, so so there's no doubt that that Bitcoin is still struggling. And I think the biggest example of how Bitcoin is struggling right now is you obviously saw the collapse on the back of FTX. And then since then, the stock market until really the last week or so had been trending neutral to higher. And we didn't see that in the Bitcoin chart, even though the Bitcoin chart usually follows risk assets like the stock market. We weren't seeing that. And that makes a lot of sense. Investors are nervous. They don't know what to believe, what not to believe in the crypto markets these days after FTX really threw a big curveball. And so I think for me, it's, it's continuing to recognize the chart that we're in a downtrend. Um, you can clearly see that, again, this is now another bearish pattern developing, and we probably have further downside. Again, I think we'll stop around, there'll be a big level around 12 to 13,000, but it wouldn't shock me to see us go down to 9,000 on the charts at this point. So, so I continue to be bearish in early 2023. I will say this, is that I expect Bitcoin to put in a bottom probably around mid-year, probably around $9,000. And I think finally it will coordinate with the next kind of bounce, although the bull market will take years to develop. Yeah, this is interesting that you mentioned that around mid-year, we in our mastermind group, when we've looked at like kind of the long-term sentiment outlook, one thing that we pegged was first week of, of February, everything was indicating that we'd be somewhere in the $12,000 range of Bitcoin. So we could see a, a little bit of an active January coming at us right here. If you look at the Bitcoin sentiment right now, uh, overall, I mean, it, it had been kind of holding its own above the overall market comparison. I think I, mean, I, I kind of compare this to like market dominance. But when you look at uh, Bitcoin, it had been pushing along and we saw that little push right there to 18 and then this fall off, a little bit of stabilization. But right now, we're now under, and this is as of 12.15, we started performing under in our kind of our bottom line sentiment trigger that we watch. Yeah. Uh, and everything's been pushing into that zone of around $12,000 sometime in February, which is kind of what I'm looking at right now. That being the case, so let's take a look at Ethereum. And if you think Ethereum is still kind of lockstep with what Bitcoin is doing, how does this play out for Ethereum in the next few months? Yeah, so I, I think for the most part, it, it is lockstep. I mean, not to, to the exact penny, obviously. We do see generally Ethereum behave slightly different. I think the positive thing for Ethereum is that you have the low going back to June over here, and yep. we have yet to take that low out versus what you've seen on Bitcoin. So you could argue that Ethereum is behaving a little bit stronger. But for me, everything comes back to if Bitcoin's going to go down to 12 or 9,000, it's hard to imagine a scenario where at least Ethereum doesn't decline somewhat, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you got to figure that they're somewhat correlated. Um, having said that, I also think that investors should be welcoming, welcoming and encouraging the, the regulation. We need to get yes. this regulation. If you, if you want a bottom in Bitcoin, if you want these assets to start to trade up, you have to get clarity in the sector. You have to know what these, these exchanges are doing with your assets that you're putting on the exchanges. And obviously, you know, that there's no shenanigans going on and no big money is going to come in this sector at this stage. I mean, that's, that's the biggest negative here is that to attract new big money is almost impossible now that FTX blew up.
Yeah. And that's the thing that I talk about a lot with high net worth individuals is, is this very issue is that we are being, a lot of people are put a lot of cash on the sidelines. You and I have talked about that, of really being in that position. Because right now what we're looking at is possibly the retail component, maybe some mid-sized whales and, and whales that might play into this as we start to see some movement. When I look at ETH, I'm on a little bit of the lower side. We're seeing a down, a pretty heavy downward trend right now on Ethereum, thinking that this could be one of those things that starts to look at uh, seeing ETH really take a hard correction in January, which which will be a question mark right now as we see more and more pressure on Ethereum, especially as the XRP and the Ripple case start to resolve, which could happen as early as January, February. That may be a very, very interesting judge result, which could start setting some dominoes in effect for regulation. Uh, when you look at yep. that, let's let's talk quickly about a handful of uh, general tokens. And and most I understand you mostly trade in Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. But when you look at the the uh, blue chips out there, whether you want to call it Matic uh, with Polygon, or you look at something like a Solana or even a Cardano, many people would put those three kind of in a somewhat of a basket as as a good tolerance, you know, in terms of what we're willing to risk, even though they're still high risk tokens. How do these play out? Let's start with Matic for you. Sure, absolutely. So I'll bring it up here. I, right now I have Cardano, but we'll bring up Matic first. And Matic, again, has the positive to this chart is that you're well off of the lows from earlier right. in 2022. So there's not many coins that you can look at that have actually, that are up still over 100% off of their lows in 2022. Uh, having said that, what's a little concerning, you have this upsloping white trend line that is now, they're tr it's trying to break to the downside. If it does, you have 70% support and then finally down to about 61 cent support. Mm -hmm. But again, the hope if you're a bull is you wanna see price get back above this white trend line and hold there. And you can see that every time you hit this line, you are getting a bounce off of it. So again, it tells us that it's a significant level. Yeah, I think you froze for just and, a minute and, there. Is probably um, or Polygon. Yeah. Yeah. So so your anticipation right now is still downward trend on on Matic for the next near future? Yeah. So for me, it's, it's just watching that trend line. So right now we are a tad below, but we haven't confirmed the move yet. So for me, it would just be watching. If it confirms, then you have to have a slight negative bias, at least until about 70 cents. Now, listen, it's at 78 cents, so it's not that far of a right. move. But in the short term, any sort of confirmation below this trend line, which is around 79, 80 cents, that would be problematic in the near term for, for Matic. I want to talk quickly about stable coins because this has been something that we're starting to see more, more potential regulation inching in. Also, the use case of FedCoin and many other applications that we may see in terms of digital dollar usage. Stablecoin settlements uh, could pr surpass all major card networks in 2023. This is new data coming in right now on what we could see around this. Now, if we do get stablecoin regulation early, when I say early in the first half of next year, in some sort of way, if USDC is, is pegged into that, if that were to occur, Gareth, how would that impact the rest of the market? Yeah. So, I, I mean, for me, the biggest thing with stable coins is the, the, the digital dollar, if the Fed goes ahead with that, right? And to me, that's a big concern. It's one of the reasons why I shy away from holding uh, U.S. Tether or, or USDC is because of that aspect of what does it mean when the government creates essentially its own stable coin and yep. processes you know, these transactions can be processed just the same. So I think for me, that is the biggest concern. And for me, it's it's saying, okay, we, we were talking about Ethereum, how it might have a leg down. And by the way, I agree with that. If the Ripple determination does not come out in the form that that is good for Ripple, it would probably translate to all the altcoins in terms of mm -hmm. them being classified as securities, right? So that would yeah. signal that you could see that leg down in Ethereum and some of the other altcoins. Um, going back to stable coins, for me, again, it, it's it's a big concern for, of mine. Uh, we know that the, uh, the US dollar, digital dollar is coming, and I don't know how or what the regulatory impact will be on these stable coins. This is something, uh, not for this show, we'll probably do another segment on this, but there was a, a big move uh, with President Biden who did an announcement in Africa around the use of, 
usage of more digital currency transactions, what that might look like. That may play into more of a global effect of how um, we could see the digital dollar play out. In other words, we could see it being tested in other countries more so than tested here in the U.S. yet. So a lot moving in that, uh, in that vein. Uh, another story here that I think also is pertinent to whether or not Bitcoin sees big moves, whether it's down or sideways, is uh, Grayscale considering selling portion of its uh, is Bitcoin trust. So if this were to happen, yeah. and this of course is if the ETF plan fails, which many people still say they think it will fail. Um, again, that all depends on what happens with uh, the regulators and Mr. Gensler. Uh, you know, if we see a little bit of pressure on him, that may change very quickly. Because uh, overnight we could see a new SEC, um, you know, uh, chair come in. But what would happen there? What would yeah, so, so one of the things that I've thought about, and, and you're right, the grayscale situation is really a very important factor for Bitcoin. They, I think they're the biggest holder of Bitcoin. Yes. Uh, so if they went into bankruptcy, if they don't get the ability to switch it into an ETF and therefore are forced into this path, you would see a major dip. And it's one of those scenarios where for me, I'd probably put out a buy order and go to sleep on Bitcoin at like $3,000. I mean, it could be one of those scenarios where you see something like that occur. Yeah. The crazy thing about it is that if the government really wanted to get rid or, or really put roadblocks in crypto or in Bitcoin specifically, this would be one way they could do it. They could deny the grayscale the conversion to an ETF. And by doing that, you're going to create some very hazardous periods. And again, remember, Crypto's already like a wounded animal, right? I mean, it's already mm -hmm. gotten some wounds. It's struggling. FTX didn't do us any favors here. If you wanted to put that nail in the coffin, that would be one way to do it. Let's hope that's not their intention. Right? So what are your thoughts on, on whale movement in the waters in 23? Yeah, so I think the whales do start nibbling. I think the key is to see some sort of framework. In fact, you know, and again, I'm no whale by, by any stretch, but I have a small investment of my overall net worth in Bitcoin, um, a tiny bit in Ethereum as well. And the reason why I'm not ready to go in more right now is I want to know that that we have some regulatory framework coming. And I think as soon as we get a hint of it, remember, the, the market and, and whales aren't going to wait for it to pass. They're not going to wait for it to become law. It's going to be the framework with, that we look at and we could say, OK, this is what's going to most likely come to fruition and then we're going to start to buy and accumulate. And that's really what I'm waiting for. But I think it does happen in 2023. Um, I really liken the, the Lehman Brothers collapse in 08 to what happened with FTX in terms of each industry. Um, from the ruins, we saw Dodd-Frank emerge in the yep. banking markets. Um, I think something like that will come across. And I also think you can look at the, the Lehman Brothers collapse and say, okay, how long did it take for investors to psychologically flush down before a bottom was made in the S&P 500. Yeah. And that was about yeah. five to six months. In addition, the S&P dropped about 45%. So mm -hmm. if you look at when FTX occurred versus when Lehman, you go out five to six months and you drop Bitcoin down about 45%, which puts us give or take around that $10,000 level. Yeah. And that might give us a basis to kind of get involved as a long investor. And I think, again, you're gonna see this coincide perfectly with that regulation being unveiled. It's going to be, this is, what's exciting for me is that to me, I finally see the end of the bear market. doesn't mean we're yeah. going to roar back to all time highs, but at least it's getting closer. <laughs> you will get to a point when you get towards that 10,000 level-ish, give or take, where big money starts to say, all right, listen, what's my risk reward here? Do I think that Bitcoin's going to survive? How much is it down? Are we going to eventually get common sense regulation that clarifies where this thing can potentially go in the future? And I do think the digital gold is where it's going to be at for Bitcoin. Now, the, the security side, meaning the alts and how they're classified, that's a little grayer, right? Because yeah. we don't know, is it going to be like the same sort of regulation that stocks have to abide by, which doesn't really make sense? Or will there be a new set of ground rules for these alts yeah. that they have to do reporting and auditing and different things like that? And I and I hope it's I hope it's a positive thing. It's one of those things that again, there's a little bit of angst in me to see what that's going to be. Hey Gareth, what do you make of this? This is the first time since 2018 Bitcoin is going to set to close with a yearly red. Uh, and if you you can kind of see the in the breakouts here all the way back to 2016. Uh, but this is, uh, is it, what does this tell you? Anything? Uh, are we watching here or is this, yes, maybe we're, you know, it's like kind of that last leg to the bottom. 
Yeah, I, I think number one, I mean, it, it does tell us it's getting close to the end. But I think more than anything, think about this. It's the first time that the Fed hasn't been printing money. So you got to argue that 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 could be the reason why it's not yeah. getting support at this stage. So so, yeah, I would say it's a lot to do with the Fed and the lack of money. And then, you know, you see all the crumbling going on around in the economy, even though we saw GDP announced today and the, and the revised GDP came in stronger, which the market freaked yeah. out about. Okay, so now you've seen the video, uh, as you can see, and if you've heard it and seen it, uh, Garrett is saying that uh, we may go down to uh, to the levels of uh, to the levels of what uh, twelve thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars at the worst case scenario. So let's uh, try to check the the BTC chart. This is the BTC slash US dollar uh, bitstamp uh, trading view. So if you want to do your analysis, trading view is for free. And you could also do some uh, subscription if you want. Okay, so this is my uh, my uh, Bitcoin uh, chart. I've been uh, doing some analysis as well, based also on the analysis of others, not only Garrett Holloway. Uh, as as uh, time goes by, uh, since uh, Q1, I've been uh, collecting uh, information and uh, some events also in 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 the Bitcoin because whatever happens to Bitcoin happens to the altcoins. Okay, so uh, sometime here in uh, in 2020, what what's the date here? Uh, sometime in uh, sometime in august august uh, sometime in uh, 2016 up to uh, 2017 uh, the bitcoin went up to like 19000 19, from uh, a low of like 600 <laughs> from the previous year 16 uh, uh, 2016 yeah around 800 and prior to that in 2019 uh, 2015 uh, bitcoin was only like you know 200 dollars to below 250 and then in to, in in uh, q1 it went up to q1 of 2016 it went up from four uh, 400 dollars yep somewhere in the 400 dollar range and then uh, on uh, January of 2017, uh, it went up to from 400, it doubled to 939. Okay, and then it's it slowly went up. Okay, slowly went up, slowly went up. And uh, as you can see here, this is a big drop from uh, from it uh, from its. Uh, all-time high in uh, 2017. So this is one of the basis of the projections for 2023. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the price was around 19,400 uh, uh, levels, 19,400 to 19,500 uh, levels, and it went down around 83% to 85% depending on how you uh, you read this yeah around uh, 83 yeah almost 85 percent if you check it okay and then when after the crash of uh, 20 uh, uh, 2018 December 2018, and then the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the crash of uh, November 2018. Uh, for uh, yeah, and then uh, there was a pickup because there was a, usually there's a Christmas rally, and then it went down again sometime in February. It went down to 3,343. Wow, <laughs> 3,343, and then it shot up during the whole. 2019 when it reached like uh, 13,000 13,000 level yeah 30, almost 14,000 
from uh, from a low of uh, what three thousand. 3,000 to 13,000. Wow, that's a 10,000 dollar jump. So, and then the pandemic happened, and of course, this is a November. November, usually there's a crash, and also here in uh, October. October, November is known to be like a ghost month <laughs> or a crash month for, for Bitcoin. I mean for Bitcoin and for 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 the for the crypto market. Okay, then we experienced a double whammy of crashes, and in March of 2020 we had the pan pandemic uh, crash. Now at this point, from uh, 2020 down to like 2015, the uh, the interest rates were like uh, low, very low. And that's why there was like a crash in 2018 uh, because of the the what the housing bubble. I mean that's 2008. I'm sorry, 2008. But uh, from uh, from 2015 to 2018, there was like almost free money, and there ad there was an additional free money in the United States when they gave some uh, relief money by the government during the COVID. And what did they do? Because they're always, uh, all, everybody's working from home. Uh, because everybody's working from home in the United States, they have their you know, uh, debit cards, credit cards. Everybody was, was like buying online and doing business online. And um, most of them discovered crypto. So plus the fact that uh, the institutions are also working uh, from home, you know, the big ones like Citibank, uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, JP Morgan, and uh, the rest, okay? So everybody like, is like uh, buying, they were online and they're doing their research and hey, guess what? Let's buy Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. And it went up and it went down again. What's this in June 20, uh, 2021? Okay, so try to remember this was uh, this was uh, the 2017 2018 thing uh, was the basis for 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 the 10 10k 10k uh, prediction. So we so from a high which is this one in uh, 2021 November. So we reach almost like uh, 69, 69, yeah, 69,000 dollars, yeah, 69, almost 69, based on this uh, graph from uh, trading view. And if we do our uh, analysis today, currently we're down 75. 0.5% from all time high. And if you do the mine if you if we landed uh, at 12k by quart uh, by uh, what quarter by, by first quarter or second quarter uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll uh, achieve like a minus 82% from all time high. Okay. And the worst case scenario is an 85% uh, Eighty-five point five percent. That's the like worst worst case scenario, but but you know it could it could be worse. <laughs> we don't know. We, you know, Bitcoin might go go back to like five thousand dollars, and you know that's why everybody is telling you know, to have dry powder, cash is king. This is the time to like accumulate uh, your cash, and uh, we all know that uh, market bounces back somehow uh, it might not be fast you know maybe we'll go back again to this trend the early trend of uh, bitcoin you know when when the market was like very very slow here from uh, from what from uh, from middle of uh, yeah from 2015 levels, you know, that, that slow pace of growth, 
2015 to like 2017. So my question is, even with the Bitcoin halving, which was uh, discussed uh, many times already, will it pump? Because uh, there are concerns of the reason why there's a pump here in uh, 20, uh, 20, 2021, uh, because there was money infused in the market. You know? Almost everybody had some uh, money coming from the government. And uh, because they're not... Uh, spending money on transportation they're like always in the home all the time so there was like reduced cost uh, living cost and uh, daily daily cost so that's why the people had extra money and for those who are intelligent enough they bought bitcoin from the low that includes also the institutional players like the big banks and investment banks and uh, whales you know, Whales, individual whales, those who are millionaires and billionaires already. So the question is, will it go back to 69,000 or at least 60,000 or even 40,000? Will it go back to that level? Possible, it's possible, but it's going to take us a while. We might creep uh, because 2024 is the bit. Bitcoin having, so we might just creep along here or nose dive <laughs> until it becomes 10, and then we're gonna go up slowly. But that depends because there are people are uh, clamoring, Americans are clamoring for, well, everybody's clamoring for a uh, you know some rules and regulations, and this can be set worldwide by the by the US government okay by the SEC by the US Congress but uh, of course there are some proponents in 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 US politics that are not uh, keen to to have bitcoin to exist to have the crypto market exist plus this was uh, exacerbated by the fact that uh, you know, uh, this December, November, December, you know, Sam Bankman Freed, you know, really F up. And, uh, and probably they're also uh, involved in uh, the downfall of, you know, Three Arrows Capital and uh, Do Kwan's uh, Terra Luna. And uh, everybody's affected because everybody's borrowing, borrowing from, from others. And once they cannot, uh, you know, they cannot uh, make profit out of the money that they borrowed and they will go bankrupt or they will go chapter 11 or chapter 7 which is you know closing up shop so that's it uh, if you have questions please uh, put a comment below oh, by the way we've reached uh, 6,000 subscribers we are now 6,013 or 15 so thank you very much for the subscribers and viewers of uh, Upstream Charlie. And uh, hopefully next year, hopefully, hopefully we'll be uh, 7,000 7, next year. Hopefully. But uh, it might, 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 might uh, you know, I might have a challenge for next year. And it, uh, subscription might, 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 you know, slow down. But I don't know. That it, that depends on you guys. So I, I try to uh, churn out the uh, quality uh, content as much as possible. So again, uh, that's my show for today. I hope you learned something. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And see you on my next video. Bye bye.